Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. Um, as Graham said, my name is Jason Hardwick. Uh, I am part of the Center for Teaching and Learning. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm very excited that you are all here today. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about uh, improving your slide design. In this presentation, I am going to be talking about the hows and the whys of slide design. Uh, I want to highlight what is important and uh, why you should consider it when you're making your presentations and how to make some quick adjustments uh, to the slide presentations that you may already have. Uh, now, as a disclaimer, my go-to is Keynote, and that's the Apple version, or that's the Apple um, slide deck program. Uh, I know a lot of you use PowerPoint, um, so I do believe a lot of the um, formatting is quite the same. Uh, I have no experience with Google Slides, um, but the very little experience I have, uh, I can only recommend do not use it. Um, I do really enjoy using uh, Keynote. Um, you can use it online. Uh, you can find an online version. Uh, so I would highly recommend doing that. The learning objectives for today. Uh, by the end of this presentation, uh, you should be able to format objects, text, and animations. Uh, you should be able to critically review your slide presentations and to experiment, experiment with some formatting. Now, the theme of this presentation is going to be less is more, and that's what I take from this quote by Coco Chanel. Uh, the point of a presentation is to transfer knowledge and to inform whoever's watching, uh, and sorry, and to inform whoever's watching. Um, once things become a bit overwhelming, it's easy to turn off your brain and stop paying attention because it's just on overload. For example, this is a lot. It's, it's, it's quite a lot. Um, there's nothing wrong with the information that's on this slide. It's exactly what I want to talk about during this presentation, but I can assume you're all trying to read what's on this slide and listen to what I'm saying at the same time. And now you're either not hearing what I'm saying or retaining what's on the slide because your brain is trying to work overtime. Now let's compare this slide to this one. This is the exact same information that was on the previous slide. It's just laid out better, which brings me to point number one. Don't read out everything that's on your slide. Your, your slide should be an accessory to your presentation. They are to help you remember what you are talking about. They're not notes for your students. If you were lecturing and a wall of text appears on the slide uh, that you're just going to read out, uh, students are going to try and listen and write at the same time. And when they go back, they'll have no idea what was important because they're just trying to write everything down that's on the slide and, what, and uh, write down what you're saying. So just put some bullet points into the slides and then really communicate why these points are important to your lecture. The next thing I wanna talk about a little bit are fonts. Uh, and I would like to talk about accessibility. Uh, certain fonts are more accessible than others. Um, and there is a bunch of research out there that ends up contradicting each other uh, when it comes to using a serif font or a sans serif font. Now the serif font is the uh, fancy fonts that have uh, the little ticks and, and quips on the ends of them, uh, like the S in serif or the F in serif. Um, and the sans serif uh, doesn't have them. Sans is without. Uh, and the character width is is the same in all of the letters. So example, the, the top sentence is the serif font and the uh, bottom sentence has uh, the sans serif font. The University of Alberta has a recommended font. Uh, I love it. It's great. It's simple. It's clean and legible. Um, I would strongly recommend staying away from anything that's too uh, flourishy, uh, like this font here. And as I'm sure we have all heard many times before, avoid using Comic Sans. Uh, this might look fun and whimsical, but it sort of just comes across as immature and uh, unprofessional. Uh, if you want to throw in personality, I would recommend doing that with uh, style choices such as color uh, and not with um, these types of fonts. Um, the last thing I want to say about fonts, uh, your or sorry, your font choices, is to find a font and stick with it through your presentation. Uh, even just these three different fonts on the screen right now is is a bit overwhelming for the eye. So another point I would like to make about font size is um, the sizing in between the letters or the kerning. All of these fonts are the exact same uh, point size, but you'll notice there is different uh, space in between each letter. Um, all, all of these can be found in the advanced features of your formatting uh, in your uh, Keynote or your PowerPoint. Um, this is under the advanced features in the uh, text formatting section. Uh, so I recommend um, 
just typing something out in uh, Keynote or PowerPoint, and then just exploring with the uh, with all of the different options that are there. Just take them to the extreme, really see what they do, uh, just so you can really understand what, what you're doing. And uh, if you're increasing a number, how that correlates to what, uh, what's happening with the font. Uh, another thing I wanna talk about is the, uh, the over style. And I mean, something like this. Um, we've been conditioned by the internet to think that underlining means a link. So if you have both links and something you want to underline for emphasis, it can get a bit confusing as to which is the link and which is just for emphasis. Also, um, uh, if you underline everything, um, the descender letters, which are G, P, Q, Y, and J get cut off and that can lead to some problems with accessibility. Um, also, uh, use, using bold or italics is a great way to emphasize something, uh, but make sure that it doesn't become too much. Remember, this is all about simplicity. Really think about what does and doesn't need to be emphasized. Um, avoid using all capitals. Uh, that will slow down your reading by about 50%. Um, it takes our eyes longer to identify the word since the outline of the word or the boma of each word looks like a square. Uh, now, uh, I have compiled a link of res or a list of resources into a Google Doc that I'll be sharing at the end of this presentation. Um, and in there is a wonderful scrolling uh, website uh, that talks in great deal uh, in great detail about um, the about some of these design principles. Again, when in doubt, just keep it simple. Talking about color and contrast. These are great ways to improve uh, accessibility and the overall appearance of your slideshow. And it will also create some personality. Um, in the documentation that I just spoke about, I've added some links to some wonderful resources about color. Um, and my quick version is uh, choose a color and then choose a complementary color. Uh, here is a uh, infographic about uh, the color wheel and how to choose some contrasting colors and form color schemes. Personally, I like to stick with the tetradic formula, and this is choosing two sets of complementary colors that are evenly spaced on the color wheel. Um, it gives me a lot more option. Uh, so instead of just having two complementary colors, you have four here. Uh, the one thing to be aware of is uh, choose one color to be your sort of main course, and the other three are kind of the side dishes. You don't want to overwhelm the eye with four colors. So you just want to choose one that is going to be the feature and then complement it with the other ones. And having said that, um, if you notice that, well, obviously this is the blue color. And uh, if you want to use the blue color, but want a bit more variation, uh, blue in itself holds a seemingly endless colors once you start to play around with the saturation or the opacity of it. And all of these formatting options can be found in the formatting option of either Keynote or PowerPoint. So again, I just recommend going in and playing around with the opacity or playing around with the color sliders. It really just comes down to experimentation until you can find out what works best for you. Now, if you do want to start adding some colors, but you're unsure where to start, the U of A has uh, a website that shows all of their color palette and the U of A uh, colors that they recommend. Um, and again, I've linked that in the document. So it, if you're just concerned about colors, just pick any of these and they'll generally all work together. The last thing I briefly want to talk about is animations and transitions. Um, I could talk about this for hours. It is my favorite thing when it comes to uh, slide deck presentations. Um, there's a wealth of options to explore in both animating text and objects, as well as transitions in between slides. Um, if you want to add to your presentations, but you're fairly new to this or you're a bit uncertain of what to do, I would recommend just putting a simple dissolve transition in between all of your slides. Uh, it makes the presentation look sleek and it just helps it stand out a bit more. For example, uh, going from this slide to this slide is just a bit jarring and cold. Whereas if we go back and we add in a simple dissolve transition, uh -huh, yeah, it's a bit more appealing and it sort of holds uh, your, your your eye sort of is more uh, interested in what's going on. Furthermore, uh, if you wanted to add more than just a, dis uh, a dissolve, you can add in a bunch of animations. Uh, now, again, in this uh, document that I've spoken about, um, there is a link to a uh, LinkedIn learning course, uh, which is uh, super wonderful. And it's where I learned a lot of the things that I like to play around with in Keynote or PowerPoint. Um, and it really will talk about uh, 
things I've spoken about today uh, in terms of animation and color, just in a lot more uh, in depth and detail. And other than that, thank you so much for coming to today's webinar. Uh, in closing, I just want to say, like I've said many times before, take some time and really experiment. Uh, just open up either Keynote or PowerPoint or even Google Slides if that's what you want to use. They've got a lot of uh, um, uh, templates that uh, are already there for you. So just open it up and just start playing around. I know it's going to take a little bit of time, but uh, the more you can just experiment and familiarize yourself with what all of the tools actually do, the better your slide presentations are going to be.